Alright, so I'm gonna go public on the YouTube's. Perfect. Which of course we've got a million second delay. Yeah, we have a 15 second delay, so it's gonna be and, interesting. Uh, oh, more of an intro, I guess. Yeah. Okay. With your awesome music. First, Yuki D and Jinx live show here from Georgetown at the Nine Pound Hammer. Yes. I am Brian Snowdy. I'm Julie Barrow. Julie, why don't you tell them a little bit about the show? All right. Well, Yuki D and Jinx is the collaboration between two longtime friends and illustrators, Brian and I. Uh, Brian, I don't remember. How did we meet? We met at a Magic Card signing in Bellingham about 25 years ago. Yeah, I was about five years old. <laughs> Brian was like, what, pushing 45? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. It was creepy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Brian and I both worked on Magic the Gathering uh, 25 years ago. It's actually been the 25th anniversary this year, Magic mm -hmm. the Gathering. We were the, one of the, we were the first 25. We were two of the first 25. First 49. Well, first 40 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. But... We're the first of everything, basically. Um, met back then, clicked, both found out we had the same sense of humor, uh, and then here we are. Here we are. Now, hey, Julie, why don't you tell people how you got your nickname, Jinx? Yeah, so Jinx, I'm the Jinx, he's the Yuki D. Jinx actually harkens back to 2004. Uh, Back when a group of girls in Seattle uh, became enamored with the uh, Texas Roller Girls down in uh, good old fashioned Austin, Texas, and decided to start a roller derby league in Seattle called Rat City Roller Girls. Uh, at the time, we, were de we decided we weren't going to use our real names, we were going to use roller derby names. And so at the, that time, there was this thing called Live Journal online, and uh, my moniker online was Jinx. And so, since everybody knew me as Jinx anyway, I just became Jinx, the roller girl. Um, and I know that uh, somewhere, so at some point, we're going to flash on the screen my picture of me as a jammer back in my roller derby days. I actually played roller derby for six years before I broke my neck at a tournament and had to retire. <laughs> so. So that's where Jinx comes from. Yeah. But Brian, Yuki D, that's like some crazy. That's crazy talk. Yeah. Uh, what's so that? Um, every most of my friends who know me know I blow all my money on samurai swords and helmets and armor. And hookers and blow. No, no, not that, not that part. Oh, sorry. <laughs> samurai swords, and I used to go to the San Francisco Samurai Sword Show every year. Yes, there is really such a thing as that. And my buddies Brian and Alfred. Uh, nickname me Yuki D because my last name is Snowdy and the Japanese word for snow is Yuki and they just put a D on the end of it. So whenever I'd show up and it's we're you know after the show it's party time, it was Yuki D and there we go. That's how I got my nickname. Oh wow! Well, well thanks know. for enlightening us. Julie, why don't you tell them how that what what's what's the theme of the show here? Well, uh, the theme of the show is anything goes. Ultimately, it's. Uh, Brian and I, of course, we've done the convention circuit, whether it's the comic book conventions, the game conventions, things like that. And as all illustrators, musicians, actors, writers know, when you're at these things, it's always an interesting event. And afterwards, we all meet at the bar, we huddle in the corner, and we swap stories. And so we thought, these stories are so fun and interesting, why don't we bring this to the public? So we've actually invited uh, musicians, artists, and media people onto our show, such as tonight's show, which we have uh, Todd Lockwood and Brom, both are science fiction fantasy artists. And Julie, who's this good looking guy sitting next to you? Over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's my hair twin. Yes. Over here to my left is uh, Tim Birch. Now Tim is the guitarist for a band called Jaded Mary, which is a local rock band. 
but also he wrote our super awesome theme song. Yes, he did. For the start of our show. Mm -hmm. He also uh, has a website uh, based on his work uh, called Soul Resonance. And he's a, uh, what is it? It's yeah. a harp it's, it's guitar. A harp, it's a harp guitar, yeah. Which, it's just, it's just it's a regular guitar with extra free free floating strings, yeah, and it's been around for a long time. It's yeah. crazy. Looking. German Austrian roots. Wow. So, so and you know Tim is Tim is a super awesome guy. He's been around the block in the Seattle area for years and years and years. Yeah. Uh, I know that Jaded Mary's opened up for quite a few people. I know Queen, yeah, yeah. Queensryche was one. That you've yeah, we, uh, God, we, it's been yeah a lot of national openers over over the years. So yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Still doing it, doing it in the writing phase right now. So, yeah. is there any chance, Daniel? Is there any chance we could throw a clip on of? Uh, Can we throw a, a Tim clip on? Let's do Jade and Mary. Yeah, yeah, Jade and Mary. For talking over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, so is Jaden Mary going to have any shows upcoming in the next couple months? Uh, we're in the writing phase right now, okay. so yeah, we've just kind of holed up and doing that thing, and, and I think we're going to have some pretty slamming, slamming material coming out here soon. So Sweet. yeah, yeah. So and as well as some some touring as well. So oh, yeah, awesome. Always, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Now I know that uh, for folks who are watching us online or watching us later online, we're going to have uh, information on Jaden Mary and on Tim. Uh, and the work that he does, he does also compose, and he performs both uh, rock and also classical works as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah Correct? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Do you want to do that one? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, yeah. Let's have another one. Yeah, throw on some soul resonance here. And this time, let us know so I won't talk over that. Okay, we're back. Thank you, Dan. Now, Tim, we've known each other for like a thousand years. Eons. Uh, almost. Eons. About 20. Almost before the viaduct. Yes. Well, maybe. Because <laughs> well, they're ripping that down right exactly. now. Exactly. I want a piece of it. <laughs> Tonight. You don't want a piece of that? Uh, come on, it's like the Berlin Wall. You get, everybody's got it's like true. a little chunk of it. You put it on your mantle. No, 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 It's true. <laughs> Can I have your piece then, Julie? You are welcome to my piece. Okay. Tonight. Yeah. 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 So uh, I used to take guitar lessons from Tim uh, about 20 years ago. I wanted to be a rhythm uh, rock and roll guitar player. And I took lessons from Tim for a, about a year, I think it was. Yeah. I think after a while, Tim had to give you your money back. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Well, that's yeah, so still. Yeah. <laughs> no, so. You could tell them the story, so... Yes, I told them the story, and I, I had to stop because uh, my wrist started swelling up uh, due to an injury that I had, and um, I thought, let's see, I could play, I could draw and make a living, or I could play rock and roll guitar and live in a cardboard box underneath I-90. With and all so the I, rest of the rock yes, and roll guitars. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I chose the art life. 
Yeah. Well, that was a wise, wise decision. Wise decision, yes. I chose wisely. Yes, yes. And I'm still under the bridge. But you can <laughs> see you're still under the bridge? I have a van, though. He's under the viaduct. But you can find me there. Excellent. I've got curtains. Yeah. I painted a picture of Tim. Uh, we, we, we probably should have... I probably should have had thrown that one up there, but uh, yeah, I start, I did uh, for my art class. I painted a picture. It's amazing. Man. Oh, thank it's amazing. you. You, you fixed my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I just took some white. Yeah, that's what I like. You know, right? He does that to everybody. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's I fixed easier. everybody's teeth. Did <laughs> Invisalign? No. Man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, I want to. Um, I want to thank Tim coming on as thank our you. very, very first virgin guest of our show. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I knew there was a reason I was holding out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these years, Tim, yes. finally got them. I know. So I awesome. wanted to awesome. say that. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank I really appreciate thank it you. again. Yep. Everybody, check out his stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. And thank you again for... Yes, Tim is, is, is really brilliant. Yeah. You, you need to check his stuff out. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Well, thank you for the... Awesome, awesome theme song. It's, no, it's so my cool. pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. pleasure. Miles, my son, we got to do that together. It was yes, great. That I know. Great. That's great. Tim, so cool. okay. always Sir, a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you kindly. You. All right. All right. Cheers. All right. Thank cheers. You, okay. All right. Give a, give now, a, cheers. our next two guests. Who we have on we now? A couple other people here. Uh, for our first. first we have seating assignments. We do. We have our okay. first runner up, which is uh, an artist. Uh, formerly known as Prince, but now known as Todd Lockwood. That's yeah. Todd. Hey, that's Todd, right come on. Come yeah, on around. Right. He's actually coming this way. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get real cozy, Todd, because you know the camera. And, uh, this is your mic. So you can just that over my mic. Come on, pull that closer. Yeah, you can just yank it over there. There we go. There we go, so people can hear you. This is, this is going to be a little bit like um, Marco Rubio getting a drink of water. Yes. Hey, I'm Todd Lockwood. Can you still see me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can so you hear me? That's the question. Yes. Really quickly, Todd, I just want to, for folks who aren't completely uh, familiar with your work, I know that you've had an, an illustrious career uh, in the arts, primarily in fantasy. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. I know that you are specifically known as the like the Dragon King, and uh, you you worked on a, a, some some very well known. Uh, I think it's R RA's work, correct? Yeah, I did uh, a lot of uh, concept design work for Third Edition Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. And uh, the the biggest fun really was designing the dragons. Yeah, they look fancy. Exactly. Dungeons and yeah, they're wonderful. And they're still using them here now, two editions later. Did you, did so you de design them. any dungeons at all, or just the dragons? No, I just did the dragons. Well, and we did character design and, and stuff like that. There's and we like will be we will be actually posting. Uh, uh, yeah, and we're posting actually your work online. Yeah, so, we're throwing it up. So we're throwing it up there so people uh, can take a look. Um, the other thing that you've been up to in the last couple of years. It's hard. You've been writing. Yeah. I have. I've been. I've been writing. <laughs> This thing, show people this your book. Thing, right this thing now, scares this me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it won't bite you. The lightning bolts won't shoot out of it or anything. This is called the Evertide. And I know this has been your baby for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. I, I started working on that over a decade ago, just like spare time. And it kind of uh, took over my life for a while. But it, it, that's where my muse was for the longest time. I had more fun working on that. Um, my own, oh, my own world, my own characters, my own story. So. I know it's his first book. I think it's what three. I'm working on, yeah, the second Number book now? now. Yeah, I, it, it, it's actually late. I keep promising that I will not George R. R. Rothfuss my sequel, but but I'm late now. So, so I, ten I guess years I have now. a little bit. Exactly. Sweet, and I know that you can pick this up. I, I know that your website, which we're also going to flash on the screen, uh, your website, uh, there's a link to get, get yeah, into yeah, this. And yeah, you can also buy it on Amazon as well, correct? You can buy it on Amazon, yep. but uh, and, and it'll be cheaper, but it won't be signed. Ah. See, that's how that works. I got mine free at San Diego Comic-Con when I visited Todd. Uh, he handed me a free copy. Do you have a copy yet? Well, then I will make sure you get this one right here. This is my copy. Oh, wow. I'll sign it for you. Excellent. We have pens. I see that. It's got to be black, we'll though. It's blue. Oh, we have a sharp No deal. No, ballpoint is best, actually. Well, um, 
um, before we keep moving on, because I know we're going to start jumping into some really interesting stuff here in a second, I want to introduce our third guest. Yes. Which I'm going to bring him over. Drum roll. So our third yes. guest. Now this guy. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> he barely fits into the seat. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Ahab yes, himself. Yes, exactly. Where's the harpoon? <laughs> yeah. right over here. So right over here to my left is the artist known as Brom. And Brom as well has had quite an illustrious career in the fantasy art world, as well as in D&D. In fact, I believe you two worked together at TSR. Mm, um, we were like two stones skipping at separate times. Right? Yeah. We did. I think we had two years together. There. No, no. You were gone. When I started. Well, I'm talking about Wizards of the Coast. And Wizards oh, of the Coast, it's... you guys work together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We overlapped okay. at Wizards yeah, yeah, yeah. for okay, a little okay, while. Yeah. That's, that's right, that's right. And you, that um, you've you also done quite a few of your own work as well. I know there was The Child Thief, there was Krampus. And yes. Lost Gods. And, and Lost Gods. Yes. That's right. That's the most recent one. It yeah. is, yeah. Are you working on anything new in terms of a book series? I am. Um, so I did, I did three books in a row. I actually did four books in a row. And... Um, at that point, I kind of felt like I was neglecting my art a little bit, and I was a little bit burnt out on the writing. So I said, you know, I just want to set aside a couple of years to get back into the artwork. Right. And, uh, you know, as creatives, we see other people doing creative things, and it's, uh, we just tend to want to do them as well. So all this beautiful art has been really blossoming over the last couple of years. So I wanted to jump back into that, and I had a really enjoyable time just exploring art and letting art go where it goes. But um, mm. I thought I was burnt out and done with writing, but it was funny after a couple of years of, of doing the art again, the story started coming back. So as of actually this month, I'm starting a new novel. Oh, wonderful. Right on. Cool. Wow. Do you have a name for it? I don't. I have some working titles. Okay. But, uh, it, it'll be a, it'll be a cult in the, the macabre, you know, normal mm -hmm. stuff that I tend to uh, be fascinated by. Sure. Well, I know that um, you, you, now you both tend to be on the convention circuit, correct? Uh, a little bit. Are you guys, uh, are you guys geared up for any upcoming event, events or conventions? Um, Either of you? I think we're both going to be at Emerald City Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. Both of you guys are? Yeah, I think yeah, that's okay starting uh, March 17th, by the way. Is, uh, Ron kind of like floats from booth to booth when he goes to these shows. For me? Yeah. I actually have a booth this time. Oh, you do? So, yeah, oh, really? Wow. All so, right. so I should be a little easier to find. The only time yeah. I ever saw you with a booth was in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. At that show. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I've been doing less of the actual Comic Cons and more of like uh, Spectrum, more of the art geared shows, Spectrum, and as Alexicon, well as Alexicon. Right. Thank you. Because yeah, yeah. you oh, have yeah. original art. Yeah, trying to introduce yeah. some original I art. Exactly. You see, um, that's why I'm going to get angry at you. Like, I know. I, I've been yelling at you for five years now. You could have been yelling more than for that. almost 15. I now. know. About uh, more than 15. I had a heart attack when you told me that the black and white stuff, you didn't do the inking, you just did it on no, the computer. No, I, I intended to, but it's just way faster. Now, to catch people Solves up, problems. Yeah, but you can sew the reason they're arguing here is because Todd used to do traditional oils and traditional mediums and has been working more in, um, I, I, in I, digital, correct? Yeah, digital stuff. Now. When I knew that Wizards was going to lay off the art staff, I jumped to digital because I figured I needed to work faster. Right. But I, so. I'll still do oils if it's something I, I want to own. Right. Like that, that was so an oil So this is an oil so. right here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have that on screen as well. Smacking his robot that. a little bit. I know. <laughs> it's not moving anywhere. So whereas Brom has actually been sticking to <laughs> the traditional. traditional. Yeah. And I, and I wanted to add, Todd is one of these rare talents that is able to paint equally as well digitally as oil paintings. I agree. It's so hard to tell the difference. Yeah. No, the, I, I know and, you and can't. He's fantastic. He pioneered a lot of techniques into the digital early on um, that was that was really ahead of its time as far as making digital look traditional. So, uh, it really was just Corel Painter and finding analogs for what I did traditionally so that I could paint the way I paint and not learn a new beast. He used to make little how-tos for us so that we could figure out as well. And I'd go home and I would try, and I'd just like, I don't know what the hell I'm he's the, doing. I'm the worst digital painter me. that's ever existed on this earth. Oh, I, I worked at a video game company for a while, and he said, oh, Brian, you got to do this digital stuff. And I, uh, it was looked like a two-year-old until my boss finally said, uh, just get a pencil and some magic markers, okay? Just, just go for it, Snowy. 
<laughs> and I cranked out a bunch of stuff and everyone was happy and they didn't do the digital. Yeah, I'm in the same camp. I just couldn't pick up the digital. Digital worked great for, for comps and prelims and also for touch-ups once the painting was done, but I could just never match the speed and the quality. Yeah, of it. Do you think that's a generational thing, or do you think that's a case by case thing? I mean, I think it's case by case. Do you think it's oh, case by yeah, case? I think it's so, case by case. Because okay. Todd's older than I am, almost. I, I mean, and, generational uh, can, <laughs> can do all that stuff, and I can't. But generational can play into it in the fact that students are going to art school and they're learning that from the ground up. That's how they're learning. So with us, you know, we that's, learned with it. That's with true. Yeah. But again, I think that's where Todd's skills with a traditional. It's why it helped his digital be what it is. I don't think his digital be, would be what it is if he hadn't had all that experience. Oh no, tradition. I agree. Not even, not even now, Todd, you used to work in the wild, demon-possessed world of advertising when you were younger. Yeah, didn't you? for 14 years. Yeah, so, so, did, so, so did, did I. I. Yeah. You worked for Coca-Cola. I lived in Atlanta. Yeah, I, yeah, I, did, I, I did a painting once yeah. called Rambo Coke, and it was a, um, an inner <laughs> company. Did you say Rambo? Coke? Rambo Coke. It was a different time then, and it was uh, an <laughs> internal uh, thing <laughs> for. Uh, Back when your soft drink yeah. might shoot you and gut you. <laughs> and it was, it with, was, a was with a K-bar. <laughs> it was Rambo Coke shooting Pepsi and PepsiCo. So he was shooting Taco Bell. He was shooting, um, you know, all the Kentucky Fried Chicken, all the things owned by PepsiCo. And it was fairly brutal. It was bullets going through PepsiCo and, and yeah, Coke. Pretty cool. Oh, man, that's everywhere. funny. And they uh, hired you Coke specifically for you. For that? Coors they Light did. beer. Oh, for really? me. It was product illustration for me. I don't know about you. Keyboards and joysticks and if I've painted uh, anything painting. more than anything else in my lifetime, it's individual dew drops on cans oh, of yeah. beer. Probably. Now, is it true that they because uh, I remember when I was taking marketing at, uh, in design and they you know, there's that whole mythology of uh, uh, subliminal messages in things oh. from, you know, the, the... I only did it once or twice. Okay, on a, on or like in this small... Oh, yeah. yeah. So, did you ever find that they asked you to do some sort of subliminal messaging in your work? Uh, no, not that I... Did you I ever thought. actually do it? <laughs> I accidentally did it once. Yeah. What do you mean yeah. accidentally? I had a, a annual report cover to do for Amtrak, and I got a flu, and I felt horrible. And I actually ended up in the hospital, and it was a day late. My art director, my uh, my agent, called me up to chew me out for making his painting late. And when I got it back, I realized that the guy sitting on the forklift, it was a beautiful painting otherwise, a guy on a forklift, a train in the background, beautiful sunset sky, and the guy looks like he's ready to just shit in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> or throw up on, yeah, on, he's on the dock. Yeah. yeah, he's just like... <laughs> so you never to... like did like a, a, a little penis here? Or a... Well, not during commercial art, but... <laughs> you get fired for stuff like that. <laughs> when, it, it, when unless I, you're good. When I was working in the collectible card game industry, um, slipping in phallic, and uh, other obscene things. It was definitely a bit of sport. So no, it's uh, <laughs> there was a lot. Of, a lot of people that did stuff yeah. like that. Did you ever get caught? Might just be yes. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, I used to write stuff on like little books, and there'd be like potions and things. And I'd write like work. Uh, uh, pee or something like that, and of course they caught it and they cut it out. Well, so, so some of the Disney animators are guilty of uh, putting <laughs> right. supposedly, yeah. yeah, like Little Mermaid or whatever, yeah. So Yuki Space D. So now I do know that one of our premises is, is what do we all talk about after, let's say, a signing or after the show? We go back to the bar. I know you don't drink a lot. Do I don't, and, and sadly these days I'm just exhausted, so I just go to my room. So I'm not one of those who participates in these wonderful uh, after conventions dis discussions. Uh, so do you have anything though? I, I know that all of us have some weird story to tell. You know, like uh oh, here it comes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, like you know, Julie's like, gonna pull it right out of you, man. I'm just gonna pull it right out. You know, like the weird stalker person, or the you know the the weird little thing that showed up, or they get invited to a party at someone's room. I can't hear it. But well. And you show up. Up and you're like the only person that was there, and they were, the, they're wearing a weird rubber suit with a cutout in the cheeks. Or whatever. So, so these are your experiences. Yeah, Julie. No, I didn't know so that. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, 
Uh, I, don't have, I don't have weird stories. You so have no weird stories? I, I have stories. I have lots you of stories. I love stories. telling stories. So if I was to tell a story... <laughs> and he said he was a quiet one. <laughs> I know. 50 minutes ago, right? He's yeah. the modest okay, one. Okay, let's go, Brom. Come on. You know, I'm awkward in conversation, but I love telling stories, and that's why I, I write this stuff. So if I was to tell you a story, I have two for you to choose from. One is... One choose is, your own adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One is a, a ghost story, and a real ghost story, and the other is my, my tragic experience trying to get into TSR, to get my job Do we have time for both? We can see. Uh, okay. Which one is, is more salacious? You're going to have my time. The, the ghost story is much more embarrassing. Oh, I like that. Oh, okay, let's start out with a ghost story. Okay, let's go with a ghost, ghost story. story. Yeah. And I, I think the reason I, I like to tell this is... As you know, people know that I, I love the macabre, and I, uh, there's a lot of assumptions around the fact all this dark art I do. Um, and it would seem that I would be the type of person that would invite ghosts and spirits and the opportunity and evil. To, to spend the night with them, say. Well, not um, just weird. But I did have if that. If I die, can I haunt oh, your stop. house? Let, let him get the no, story out of you. You cannot, <laughs> because this is the, the moral oh. of the story is the okay. fact that I'm actually horrified and terrified of the beyond, or, or the ghosts and the spirits. In this case, you've often heard about people, would you, would you do the dare if there's a haunted house, a documented haunted house, a haunted house where maybe a dozen people have multiple times seen ghosts in this house. Would you be willing to spend the night in that house by yourself? Who, who here would do that? Uh, I could probably do that, yeah. And there's so many people say that. And I might be able to do it if I had one other person with me. I'll but go with you, bro. You would go with you. Yeah. But somehow I, I see, make I a, see a, like a show. Yeah. Yeah. I we'll make a show out of it. Yeah. 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 I ended up in, an, <laughs> in a haunted house by myself, not by design. So I was working for the Franklin Mint. And this was Franklin Mint was big. They, they had a, uh, their office was the size. Of, they had their own uh, zip code. It was so big. So wow. they, I was going to do some designs for them. They flew me out there to the northeast. And they said, we're going to put you up in this beautiful bed and breakfast. It sounds wonderful. They drive me out to bed and breakfast. I arrive at 9 o'clock at night because it's West Coast, East Coast. And I go in there, and there's a, a person who runs the place running for me. This thing's been there since the 1700s, 1600s even. And we sit down, he fixes me a meal, and uh, the place is dark, and it's everything you would expect in this, this old bed and breakfast. And for some reason, I just, because it was a bit spooky, I said, hey, have you ever seen any ghosts around here? And his face lit up, and he said, boy, have I. And he started telling me the stories, and, and there were plenty of them with the things he had seen, the other people who worked there to see, and uh, apparently the place was uh, a hospice, a hospital on the Underground Railroad, as well as during the Civil War, so apparently there were a lot of people that had been injured and died there, and so on and so forth, and he told me about the different ghosts. So that's all good and well, I'm fairly interested, um, until he's finished and it's fine. He goes, well, it's 9.30, I have to, I have to leave. I've got to get out of here before the ghosts <laughs> yeah. come. Hold on a second. <laughs> it's like, time for the leave. ghost to show up, I'm out of here. And then I go, well, are there, wait, why are, there, are there any other guests here? He goes, no, you're all alone. <laughs> And, and it's that, Surprise! It's the sound when he left. Just me and that bleeding girl down the hall. Yeah. <laughs> Kid floating with no feet, just down the hallway. <laughs> Everything. So when he left and that door shut, it was like a coffin lid shut. It's just like thud. And I'm in here alone. It's dim. And he goes, oh, your room is upstairs. It's room number nine. He gives me the key to my door. It's like he doesn't help me go up there. <laughs> so and he then he runs. We don't go up there. <laughs> it's room number 666, kid. Here you go. I'm peering up the stairs. And I think part of the reason why Ghost in the Macabre had such an effect on me, as with most creatives, our imaginations seem to run wild. And, and it doesn't take long for us to conjure up every possibility. And I don't even know if I would have been horrified of actually seeing a ghost. It was more that haunted house feeling that something was going to pop out at me at any second. So immediately my back goes to the wall. Boom. Wall. I've got to be able to see everything in front of me. So I'm scooting up the stairs <laughs> with my back against the wall. The problem is on this wall is there's these weird creepy paintings from like the 17th century, the 18th century, the slightly askew faces with eyes going in two different directions. So I am going down the hall trying to so get to bad armor armor too. <laughs> Try not to make eye contact with any of the without the painting. <laughs> I know the minute I do, they're gonna move. The eyes are gonna move, right? right. And that's We've it. All I'm, seen gonna, that I'm movie. gonna faint, yeah. I'm gonna fall I've down the stairs there. and die. 
So I make it to the top of the stairs, and then room number nine is at the end of the hall. And it's like the hall just grew longer as I looked at it, right? But the problem is there's a bunch of doors along the way. There's seven of them. I don't want my back to any of these doors, because if my back's against the door, the door's is going to open, right? right? And whatever's in there is going to pull me in. So I kind of have to, like, slide back and forth between doors and doors to get to number nine. The whole time making You're no, zigzagging through the hall? No eye contact. Back to the wall. Well, you can't walk with your back to a door. That's, that's, that's bad. Right. Exactly bad. Right. They're going to drag you in. <laughs> so I finally get to my door, and I unlock it, and of course the worst possible thing happens. Click, check. The door just slowly opens. Complete blackness. This is a house built in the 1600s, 1700s. There's no switch like right here. I have to reach into utter darkness, and I'm reaching and I'm reaching, trying to find a switch. And any second, it's going to grab me. Whatever it is, it's going to grab me. It's going to pull me. It's going to devour me. Flap, flap, flap. I can't find it. Find it. My whole body in this darkness. I get it. I get it. Right. Come in the room. Shut the door behind me. Shut the door. Lock it. Okay. I'm in the room. Back against the wall. Throw the stuff on the bed. I need to brush my teeth, I need to pee, <laughs> I need to get in bed. You're so, so sensible at that one yeah. point. It's like, I know there's ghosts wanted. in here, but I gotta brush my teeth first. I <laughs> all I want is to get in bed, and there's a little hall ghosts to a little bathroom. Ghosts are attracted to tartar. <laughs> I don't know. Black. <laughs> so I scoot down to the bathroom, open the door again, it's the err, find a light, click it on, go in the bathroom. So, start brushing my teeth. I'm on the side of the sink. I do not want to be facing the mirror because... <laughs> did the ghost squeeze the toothpaste from the middle? It did not. If you look in the mirror and you look down and you look back up, it's going to be in the mirror, right? That's like every, oh, yeah. every heart zone. So I have to brush my teeth from the side, spit, don't look in the mirror, and then there's the pot. I got a potty. There's, you there's, gotta there's go things in the toilet. There's, there's a, no, that's not the problem. There's a closet. Oh, oh you didn't think of that, toilet. did you? There's a closet, and the closet is a jar. It's just this much a jar. It's blackness. So I'm not going to turn my back to that. So I go over there, and I try to close it. I close it, click. It waits like four seconds and goes, click. Like something is on the other side open. So I'm dying. So of course I have to squat like a girl to pee. I pee, I get done, I get out of there, make it in the bed. So you think you're all good, you're in the bed. So here's the deal. Once you're in the bed with the covers here, and you close your eyes, you cannot open them. Because if you open them, it will be floating above you, looking at you, right? Um, like Salem's Lot, he's outside the window. Right? So I spent the next three hours trying to will myself to sleep. So and you, uh, you got this great gig when you were eight? Is that <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so that's my hard sword. There never was a ghost. Oh. But I did the whole it, It's just creepy experience now. Yeah. yeah. It, that's pretty fun. So, so yeah. that's, that's my, my ghost story. Todd, do you have a ghost story? Uh, we had a ghost in our first house in Woodstock, Illinois. Really? I had a friend engrave glasses for us with the Lord and Lady on them. The, the pagan mm -hmm. god and goddess. And we set them up on the top of the TV stand. We had a cat, but he was quite old and he... He didn't jump anywhere anymore. And every morning, those glasses were on the floor. And I picked them up and I put them back on top. Nothing else ever fell. Ask Rita, hey, did you maybe move those to dust or something? She's like, me, dust? Are you kidding? <laughs> and finally one day I just said, look, whoever you are, just go into the light. It's okay. We're, we're not going to screw with your house. or." We were the first people who ever lived in this house, so it was weird, and I just felt like I was going through mushrooms, but they never fell off the top of the stage. Yeah. And that you didn't mean I believe anything was going on, but it's just... Yeah. You know, I have two ghosts the Twilight in music. you had two? Two. Um, I went to the Art Institute of Seattle back during the Civil War in 1983, and there was a ghost in the building. It's called the Ghost of Broadway and Pine. Was that Dennis? Didn't what? they call it Dennis? I don't know. I can't remember that part. <laughs> he, he died. I, everybody you knows about it. No, because it was it used to be the Burnley School of Art. Before Burnley. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's actually a very well-known yeah, story. Yeah, very, very about famous story here in Seattle. A boy who fell down a flight of stairs. Yep. Oh. And I was and walking died. up the stairs. I used to be the first one to school uh, before anyone else because my bus would either arrive late or I'd be super early. So I thought, well, I'll be super early. I'll be a good, good kid. And um, I would walk, I would whip open this door, and it had a spring on it. It would shut behind you. And you'd walk up this wooden staircase, and then up, and then you'd go into the school. I whipped the door open one day, and it stayed open. 
and I got halfway up that staircase, <laughs> and I could hear these footsteps behind me, loud, like it was a girl in high heels, because it's a wooden staircase, a hollow wooden staircase. And I just happened to uh, turn around, and I'm like, well, who's this? Because I didn't see anyone. I turn around, the door then closes, and there's nobody there. The second one is I was at Jesper Mirfer's house. This is about 12, 12 13 Jesper years Mirfors, ago. Just oh. for the record, Jesper Mirfors is a, uh, was the first art director of Magic the Gathering, yeah. and he's mm -hmm. also an artist. Yeah, Wizards so, of the Coast. Yeah. And uh, we're playing video games, and someone threw a soda can right past my head. It, it flew across the room. Right off, a, uh, it was, a hot, it was uh, empty, and uh, there was no one there. We were the only ones in the room. And I went downstairs, and Jesper's like, oh, yeah, we have a lot of poltergeist activity in the house. I'm like, well, you got fucking ghosts in the house. You didn't tell me that. Yeah, so that was uh, two ghost stories. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, got a, I got a quick one. Yeah, let's oh, hear it. Oh, you do? So, okay. Uh, we're recording at... Um, you may have to lean in really hard. Yeah, lean in, Tim. Let's hear the ghost story. I'll, I guess I'll just get close. It's all, we're all family here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, we're touching junk. Um, yeah, no, it was at uh, Studio Litho. That's and not we're recording him. with a producer from L.A. And um, Floyd was uh, engineering, and we just got done with all these tracks. And um, this Pearl Jam studio is, uh, I won't tell you where exactly it's at, but it's in Fremont. If you know Pearl Jam, you know the studio. Is you this the animal studio? Yeah. Uh, this, was, this is at, it's, uh, it's at Pearl Jam, it's called Studio Litho. Studio Litho, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, um, anyways, here's a long story. Um, got done with these like, really hardcore session, about two days. And uh, I'm like, I'm really glad that I'm beeping done with those tracks. And uh, our bassist was standing next to me, and my sunglasses flew off of the top of my amp head and cleared like cleared the top of the amp on the ground. There's no sound happening, you know. It's not like they vibrated off. And I was like, "Did you see that?" And he was like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe I need to redo that track or something, or I don't know." So I uh, I talked to Floyd and I said, "Floyd, what's what's the deal?" And he's like, "Oh no, man, this place is definitely haunted." I guess Tad Tad had an experience. And he wouldn't, oh, yeah. go, he wouldn't go to the bathroom again downstairs. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Like, it is tad, you know, right? right. So, um, I know who you are. You can have yeah. that experience without ghosts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> well, 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 that, you know. And, well, I know Bron can definitely <laughs> relate yeah. to that, huh? Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, so that's a deal, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and huh. there's, you know, the other bathroom that everyone uses is way too close to where everyone's at. So, you know, it's just, that's another haunting that probably happens. So, musicians Every out there, yes. if Studio Litho, if you have any stories about Studio Litho, yeah. Yeah, being yeah. Yeah, share with us. Share with yeah. us. Yeah. Let us know. I guess it used to be another floor, and they took the floor out and made it one big, huge, grand room. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Possibly. Hey, Dan, how are we doing on time? Uh, it's 9.40. Oh, we're still good. We yeah, got five good. minutes. Yeah, we got a few minutes left. So, any saved rounds? Uh, saved rounds. What are you saved talking about? Rounds. Saved, saved rounds. Things you want to say before the show ends? Yeah. Um, well, here's something kind of fun. A yeah. friend of mine, Sean Speakman, uh, he started a publishing company a few years ago in order to pay off his cancer debt. A bunch of art, uh, authors contributed stories to him. And he published wow. it in a book called Unfettered. Um, I contributed a short story, a prequel from my book. Cool. Actually, and, you know uh, what? I, I think I recall hearing about this. Yeah, oh, he, he yeah. paid off his cancer debt. And yeah. he has since released Unfettered 2, another book of the same vein, Unbound. And Unfettered 3 is about to come out. And all the proceeds from these books go into a fund to help authors and artists with medical debt. That oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So that's he's so paying cool. it back and paying it forward in a big way. And in Unfettered 3, I've, we've included, I did the, I've done the covers for all of his collections. Oh, wow. But I included the, the prologue from my next book, is in Unfettered 3. Oh, so that's fabulous. If you're dying and you need a sneak peek, there, there you go. Unfettered 3. And it's for a good cause, and you get a bunch of other great, great stories, too. That's excellent. That's really that's awesome. Great. More of that. It should be more of that. People helping each other with yeah. art. Yeah, that's, that's the way it should be. Sean has survived cancer twice. Get out of here. And he's Damn. the happiest guy I know. Good for him. Yeah, I mean, he's. I love the breed. I don't know. Enjoy a life. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Brom, any last saved rounds? Anything you want to um, share? I, I don't know. What's, wow. yeah. What scares you more than anything? Can you tell, can you tell the world? Oh, you're going to dig deep into yes. the man's soul now? Let's go deep. 
don't know. There's so many things to be scared of. Right? <laughs> what scares you? Yeah, Julie. What scares me? Nothing. Nothing yeah. scares me. Uh, uh, taxes. <laughs> no, no, I've been through the tax hell. I can get through it. I'm actually, I'm actually one of those people that is kind of frightening. I, I actually, I am actually pretty high on the psychopath. You know, they do the psychopath scale. They found that people who are highly optimistic are a, have, it's a certain level of psych, psychopath. Psycho, 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 yeah, I knew you were interesting. Yeah. I tend to be a risk taker, so I love doing things that scare me, like uh, jumping out of airplanes. Like and roller derby. Yeah, roller, roller derby, derby, yeah. Swimming with sharks, uh, being in haunted houses, yeah. things like Talking that. to these three. Talking four. to these guys, going live <laughs> on the show. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah. So, um, so nothing scares you. Everything um, scares me. Everything scares me. I, I do enjoy being scared. I love nightmares. You know, I ask my wife not to wake me up. Uh, I, I enjoy that. Wow. Really like a great dream. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's scary. It's a good dream. Have you, ever, have you actually seen a ghost? I have not. No. Um, really? I, I lived in uh, rural Wisconsin, and there was where the Bray Beast, Bray Beast Road, yeah, yeah. out there. There's a werewolf, and uh, one night when I was taking out the trash, I heard it growling and crunching, and uh, of course, in my mind, once again, that was the Bray Beast, and uh, <laughs> left the garbage in the middle of the yard and got into the house. I think that's the closest to uh, the macabre I had come. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Two, many saved rounds. Last, last thoughts, um, last words. Hate everyone that's tuning in, and want to thank these guys. It's been great to meet everyone. Oh, yeah. And uh, gosh, yeah, just hello to everyone. Um, actually, today, sad deal, but um, uh, 11 years ago today, we lost our original vocalist mm. on, a, on a Harley. So give it love to Jeremy. Give it love to Jeremy from Beyond. Oh, man. And um, yeah. So, you know, we just, we're doing it, right? Oh, happy, yeah. to, happy to be here. Well, this is a great yeah. way of celebrating the life yes. of your Indeed. friend Jeremy. Indeed. Indeed. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, before we we log off, because I don't want to log off just yet. And I'm um, out of beer, too. Well, That's a problem. whatever. You've already <laughs> checked out. <laughs> um, really quickly, I want to um, not only thank our three guests here for yeah. coming in and uh, hanging out with us, I want to let everybody know that on February 9th, we'll be doing another Yuki D and Jinx show. Mm -hmm. uh, we scheduled the Nine Pound Hammer, nine o'clock, same deal. Uh, our, our guest for that evening is uh, twofold, interesting. We've got uh, the uh, lead singer for The Accused and for the legendary punk rock band, The Farts. His name is Blaine Cook. Mm -hmm. uh, he will be joining us as well as a wonderful, I want, he's called a creep artist. Uh, but he's a, he's an artist that's mostly well known for his horror work. Yeah, horror, done, horror artist. Horror artist named Nick Ducker, or better known as Nick the Hat. He's, he's actually pretty prolific in the world of Cthulhu. Yeah, he's, cool, cool. yeah, yeah. he's, 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 he's like great. Stuff, yeah. uh, so we got them both on February 9th. Uh, and of course, we'll be listing all of this stuff uh, on our website, on Facebook. We're at UKD and Jinx on Facebook. We're going to be throwing up an Instagram account, uh, UKD and Jinx as well. Uh, and and it, this show is going to be uh, posted on our YouTube page uh, right. for people to watch later on so you guys can watch yourselves. And, and I know how much you guys love to watch yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate taking the time, driving all the way down to yes. Georgetown to hang out. Yeah. Again, uh, folks, make sure to check out these guys' work on their both their websites. Uh, thank you for get, thank you for your book. I really appreciate it. What's that? Thank you for your book. I really appreciate it. Woohoo! Um, Thanks again to our tech crew. Yes. I want to also thank our wonderful Dan and John. Thank you guys yes, for being you. behind the camera and the sound. The I want to also guys. What? Oh, Stop no. it. <laughs> I also want to thank really quickly our sponsor, The Stranger, uh, Seattle's only newspaper. I want to thank them for being such an awesome, uh, awesome sponsor. Yep. Also, I want to thank the Nine Pound Hamburger yes. for having us here down in wonderful Georgetown. Thank you guys. And uh, until then. We'll see you guys next month. See you later. Awesome. Bye-bye.